everybody. We're going to turn the wormhole bowl this week. That's a little bit of a misnomer. This is a piece of ambrosia maple, which is also known as wormy maple. Those streaks that are in there are caused by the ambrosia beetle. They carry fungus in, I believe, on their feet when they bore into the wood to lay their eggs. And then the fungus gets transported further along in the tree by the sap. So sometimes you get blue streaks, sometimes you get slightly green streaks. Um, this piece happens to be mostly kind of a blue-gray. Uh, it's very pretty. It does have actual holes in it, so it's not going to be a bowl for liquid of any sort, but it's going to be a nice size. I think the blank was about eight square by four tall, and it is kiln dried. I think I ordered it from Woodcraft. I wanted something that I could make a yarn bowl out of, but I am going to do some more practicing on cutting the slot before I tackle that project on a nice piece of wood. So I decided to just go ahead and use this one for a bowl that I can add some detail to because it's already dry and I don't have to worry about it moving around. It's my half inch 40-40 grind bowl gouge. I'm just working on getting some of the material at the bottom taken off and also rounding the rest of the cylinder. I'm going to use a tenon for the mounting on this one. I decided I wanted to leave a foot, so I'll cut the shoulder for the chuck to sit against just larger than the tenon, and then when I go to take the tenon off, the shoulder will then become the foot. This is my half inch, oh, maybe it's five eighths. Anyway, this is my larger of the three hurricane bowl gouges that I have a 55 degree angle on. You're gonna see me do a lot of scraping and shear scraping here, trying to get the surface flat. I'm still having a lot of trouble with little lines. 
some of them are from dropping and picking up the cut coming around the corner, but I'm not really sure why I'm not able to get rid of them with the, that's a carbide shear scraper. And I do some shear scraping with a couple of different bowl gouges. I went after it for a long time and I finally decided that I should just carry on because there's a good chance that when I turn it around in the chuck I'm gonna have to clean it up a little anyway. And you can see that even after all of the scraping that I showed you guys I've still got a couple of ridges there towards the top so I don't know if I've got a little play going on in this chuck because it's on the lathe with the spindle adapter or if it's just the way that it is. And you can see I do have some wobble after I turned it around in the chuck, so back to scraping and shear scraping. My initial plan was to put a bead around the, not quite on the rim, but toward the top. And then I decided that maybe I wasn't going to do that. And then when I turned it around and realized that I was going to have to come back over this whole surface, I decided to go ahead and just put a small one in. I think I'll have used all of my tools trying to get the outside surface here smoothed. I used a fingernail grind bowl gouge. I used a 55 degree grind bowl gouge. I used a negative rake carbide cutter. I used a carbide shear scraper. And still, I end up spending, I think I spent probably an hour sanding and I kept having to go back and start over at like 80 grit because I kept finding weird little scratches in there. I just figure this is good practice. I'm not really sure why I have so much trouble getting rid of the little lines and the, and the grooves with the tools, but I'll just keep working on it until I get it sorted out. Just using a little point tool to make some lines around the bead. That's my smallest spindle gouge. And my 4040 bowl gouge. My skew I'm just using as a negative rake scraper. Uh, it has a nice point that I can get in 
right up to the close to the edge of the bead. If I keep making beads, I really am going to have to get a beading tool. Finally decided that was enough messing around with the outside and I'm going to start hollowing it out now. I'm mostly using my half inch 4040 bowl gouge to go along the inside there and also to cut back the center part so that I have clearance as I go down toward the bottom. And then when I'm ready to just hog some stuff out, I get the 5 8 fingernail grind. Makes a little quicker work. I was able to go back with my bowl scraper. I have a negative right ground on the top of it and clean up the inside as I went. I didn't get very much chattering with this one, so I didn't have a lot of trouble with the lines on the inside, not nearly as much as I had on the outside. I spent probably twice as long sanding the outside as I did the inside. I'm using my negative right carbide just to kind of hollow out a little bit of a depression there in the bottom. Doing pretty good as far as a consistent thickness. This was a little tricky because I've got the bottom toward the foot coming to kind of a narrow dimension. I had to be careful I didn't go through the through the bottom from closer to the side. So you can see there are a few lines on the inside, but it's it's not too bad. Just cleaning the bead up a little bit with the sandpaper. This is the beginning of my sanding woes. I've got the lathe speed down pretty far here. I think it's only maybe at 220 or 240, uh, trying to see if that is gonna make any difference in 
helping to let the sandpaper touch the entire surface and get those lines out faster, but it didn't seem to make any difference. So when I was done sanding, I blew it out with the air compressor and then wiped all the surfaces off with denatured alcohol. And then I put a one pound cut of shellac on as a sealer. And I'm using the Axe products on this one as far as finishing goes. So this is the Axe Abrasive Sanding Paste. And I've got it all kind of rubbed in and now I turn the speed up to, I don't know, maybe 1200. And I'm buffing it, get all the excess off and melt the wax. And now we're going to do the Axe Polishing Paste. It's always fun to watch it melt in. I took a bamboo skewer to get all of the excess sanding paste and polish out of the bug holes. So I took the tenon completely off and I've decided that I want to try to make the foot a little less thick, I guess, a little less tall. Anyway, so I'm cutting just a little bit of a chamfer with my skew and then I go back with my bowl gouge to cut across the bottom and clean it up. I used my point tool and put in a couple of decorative lines. I like the way that looks. I think it's really cool. So after I got rid of the nub and sanded it up, I just soaked the bottom in shellac for now and I will sign it and put some, probably some polish paste over it when I'm finished. Well, all the sanding paid off, I got rid of all the scratches and it looks really good. I'm quite happy with the way that it came out. It's pretty thin and light and I didn't go through the bottom, so that is always a huge yay. Thank you guys again for watching. I appreciate it. Let me know what you think about this project down in the comments. I'm going to put together a quick little update video uh, here soon on the Big Monster Bowl and let you guys know how that one's coming along. Until then, you all be safe out there. And don't be a jerk. <laughs>